Hello, fellow travelers, and welcome to the Diversion of Stars podcast. How are my loyal listeners? Thank you for continued support. Remember to click that subscribe button, everybody. Amazing show for you all, because born in the mothership is Wesley McKinnis. You know him as singer-songwriter Wesley Mack. Now plays Owen Schultz on The Imperfects on Netflix. Now come on board as we go traversing the stars. Hello, Mr. McKinnis. Thank you so much for coming to the Diversion of Stars podcast. It is my pleasure to be here chatting with you, man. Thanks for having me on. Totally mine. Me and my wife have been binging Imperfects. So this oh, is damn. my honor. Thank you so much. Oh, man. that uh, I'm stoked to hear that. I Honestly, it kind of blows my mind. Like, you, you, you work on something like that. You know, it's been a year and a half since I shot it. And then, and then you know, you do interviews and you, it, it all of a sudden kind of comes back to life. I had a fellow message me last night who I met in peru in 2009 and i haven't spoken to since and just sent a message to me last night he found me on instagram and he's like oh i just saw your show he, like, he lives in you know in like in in peru it, it just it's, it's neat how, how that stuff like um pulls people back into your life and you get to meet people who the show is having some impact on in their life that's like, great like i said i think what the cool thing about imperfects too is that it's working very quickly through word of mouth because it, mm-hmm. it, it it's not you know, I didn't see it like streamed heavily on Netflix as far as like them advertising it, but word of mouth has been spreading very strongly. Yeah. It's amazing how many people are talking about it. And it's really a smart show. Totally. That That's the same way I, I feel on it, where it's like, it kind of feels like the little show that could when it launched there. Like it didn't, you know, it, it's not getting the like, we're not season five of Cobra Kai kind of thing where it comes out like gangbusters out of a cannon. But it, it is nuts, the like reception it's, it's been getting over time of like people are talking about it and like that, you know, as you start to see like fan art getting made for it, that stuff like really excites me because, again, I'm I'm a total geek nerd myself. And so anytime <laughs> you're like engaging that community, I'm like, yes, these are my people. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And well, on the show, you play Owen Schultz from um, On The Imperfect. And he's a really cool character. Like the, the, the scenes you're in are just kind of badass scenes. And so, <laughs> uh, so how did you get involved with the imperfects? You know, I, I auditioned for it. Um, you know, funny enough, I actually originally auditioned to be a different character to do that. And then I was working on another show called guilty party at the time, um, which is a uh, show with uh, Kate Beckinsale on, on Paramount plus. And, and so I ended up losing, losing the role altogether. And I was like, Oh no, it's like, I was really, 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 really bummed about it. Cause like, I, I loved it from immediately reading it. I was just like, it just kind of gave me like, like old school, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer hmm. vibes of just like this, like quirky take on like, it's taking this trope of an idea and kind of spinning it on its head. And I love that. And then, and then fortunately I, I had another opportunity shortly thereafter where, where Owen was, was something that I was able to read for. And then I was like, oh, this is kind of perfect in, in a weird sense. And that like, and, and then I got to like step into Owen. And I'm like, oh, this feels really natural to me. I'm like, I feel like a total geek in this guy where I'm like, this is me. I was just like the, the number of times I had a friend of mine watch it recently. And they're like, yeah, it was weird because it was kind of just like hanging out with you, watching you be Owen. Um, like, obviously, I, you know, I kind of get into a different gear by the end of the episode because I'm not usually punching through walls in my normal life. Um, but I, I really relate to him. You know, he feels like this really simple kind of like altruistic dude who just like, I think there's something so charming about how he's just like, oh, I got powers now. Like, obviously, I'm going to go and be a superhero <laughs> and like try and save the day and stuff. And then you get him rubbing against these other characters who like, I love the response they've given the main cast, how it's not your typical one where they're like, no, we just want to go back to our life now. Like, let's let's we're not saving the day here. Like, let's you know, the initial gut reaction is like, this is terrible. This is Mm. an affliction we have. Um, And admittedly, everybody's power is different on it. So, you know, it changes their response. But I love getting to be in that dynamic, um, the push and pull of me being able to be like, come on, guys, like, let's be a super squad. And then being like, dude. (laughs) you're an idiot <laughs> like, <laughs> you're so naive yeah so it's it is is like tremendously fun to be a part of so when when you got the role of owen what did they tell you about the character i mean you like you know like you know he's a geek like what what else do they insights do they give you to the character and how to play him um so dennis who's like the creator of this is it was really great at just giving me like there's some stuff that i 
I won't even share where I feel like I've given he's you know I've been given some insight that that goes further beyond what, what's available with the show now that was really helpful. Um, but yeah, just having that like early on kind of foresight to even when, when Owen shows up again in, in episode nine, you I feel like you learn a little more about him that like, oh, he came up with like him and Juan were like buds and like just talking about like reading comic books together. Like that really, that was the anchor of the whole thing to just be like, what if you spent your whole life imagining what it would be like to be a superhero mm. and then you're given that chance? Because that's different than like someone who wants to be uh, anything else. Like it, it's just like all of a sudden being given your dream thing Mm. Um, but also not being like super socially, like, I don't know. He, he's, he's awkward. He doesn't know what to say. He, he, he wants to be the, like, you know, I'm a superhero. He wants to have the like Christian Bale voice that he turns on, but that's not really him. And so it's, it was really fun. There was like a degree of almost like meta acting with it, where it was like me playing Owen, who is trying to figure out how to play a superhero oh, is, yeah. is, what it, is what it feels <laughs> like. And he's trying to do the right thing all the time. Um, and that's really, I find that fun. Like, I, I'm a big sucker for the non-anti-hero. I, I really mm. love the, like, classic hero, like, riding on a white horse. Like, so it was like, Owen trying to figure out how to be that guy. So, we, from watching the episode, we all know that Owen has that the big twist later on in the episode. Mm-hmm. Like, without giving anything to away, um, but I hope everyone's watched it. Um, there's that twist where we find more about, he's not as superhero-y as he thinks he is maybe that's the best way to say it towards the end yeah yeah totally um i i like that because he it throws him in this like conflict of conscience where it's like he's trying to be a good guy and all of a sudden he starts seeing evidence to the contrary like if he looks in the mirror near the end of that uh, thing he's like oh no shoot he's the villain right now <laughs> like <laughs> i'm the bad guy like when you, when you when i first like saw the episode i'm like oh i assume i'm gonna get killed like i'm gonna be a monster of the week kind of thing and 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 you know like he, so all of a sudden it gets his whole like self is put into into crisis so actually the first scene that i shot as him is that like where i start to kind of lose it i go out and I, I punch the the um the column there um which i blew my knuckle open doing on <laughs> oh shit <laughs> i maintain it was covid related in that like my knuckles were just so dry from hand sanitizing like <laughs> this is still like you know kind of early in 2021 so it was just like you know the caution was like at, at maximum um so i remember i after like some of the crew being like oh no like your knuckle and i'm like no like i think paper would have taken my knuckle open right now because like i barely tagged it um but it, it was fun that that moment to me was like his whole conflict in one moment to just be like going out and then destroying this thing and it all of a sudden being like a now you're looking at this piece of property you've just destroyed and it felt very like metaphorical to me to be like oh no oh no this is so just it's like it was repeatedly trying to do the right thing scene to scene but like balancing in that i have copper madness <laughs> well, i never heard before but sure hey yeah totally yeah. it's, it's a total affliction yeah, you gotta watch out for it <laughs> so on the show depending on who you talk to Owen is either invulnerable or impregnable, depending on uh, the, the the individual you're talking to um, on on the show. Um, so, how does being invulnerable affect him as a person? Do you think? Because as what we know, what his um, turn is and what his where direction he goes in being a super wanting to be a superhero, would he have done those things if he wasn't invulnerable? Totally, and that that comes up where like Tilda kind of throws that in my face, being like, "You could have done any of this stuff, like saving a cat out of a tree and stuff like that." Doesn't, and and I, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I think he's the kind of guy who would have wanted to do that kind of stuff, but I I see Owen as like he's not fearless, you know, mm. like he's he, I think he's someone who would want to do it but might be freaked out that like, Oh no, what if I fall out of the tree? I'll hurt myself. Like I don't see Owen as someone who is like super coordinated right, and, like, right, right. top athlete kind of thing. Um, so I see him as someone who maybe might've like been waiting on the sidelines for his moment, a lot of his life. And so now all of a sudden he's like given the opportunity to do it, which is why when they're talking about like, Oh, we got to cure you. Why I think he, there's so much revulsion there being like, no, 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 no. This is finally like, I see him as a good guy. Who hmm. finally has been given the like the race car he needs to get in the race um so that's kind of my take on it because I, I think as, as a fan and, and a nerd watching the show is that owen's one of the only characters on the show 
that wants to keep the powers that he has. Yeah. Everyone else is trying to like get rid of them as fast as they can. They're like, this is a curse. This is this, you know, uh, a troopy, what all that wants to get rid of his thing. And as a nerd who spent my entire life thinking, I want to be a superhero. I want, I want yeah. my powers as well. I don't understand that concept. Like, I wish I wasn't a superhero. It's like, dude, how, why? But Owen totally. is me. He wants the damn powers. Uh, and that's, that's where I'm at as well. Like that. I, I just, this is where I feel like the casting really fit where I'm just like, cool. I spent my whole life thinking like this. Right. Um, so I guess there's no real leap for me. Like I, I do get admittedly like everybody else's powers have, I think more drawbacks, but I guess you could probably think of some for Owen. Like one, he's riding on a fine line of losing his mind. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> you also like, I don't know if Owen ever needed to like have blood taken from him or anything like that. Like, I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you get a needle in there. Um, I guess you'd need like some localized chlorine gas right, right. from, <laughs> from, from from what they're talking about. Um, but yeah, no, like, I, 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 it was really easy to be in the arguments with the other cast members and to just be like, like it, it's nice when it's, when it's so easy to slip into, like, it almost makes me too invested at times. Like I've, <laughs> I've like so much love for it. I was like, I see you, man. I'm, I'm right there with you. Now, do you think, he wants to be invulnerable. Wants to, okay, he wants to be invulnerable, and you're saying he, and he does good deeds. But do, does he do good deeds because they're good, or because he wants people to see him as being someone who does good deeds? I think it's possible and likely that it's both. You know, I think he likes the idea of the fame and the notoriety, but I also think he's like an altruistic person who wants to do good things. I think everything that I like feel coming off the page with him. Um, leads me to believe it's both you know and that he actually is like it, it's it's an interesting character because i find sometimes noble characters can be boring <clears throat> you know if you're just like a true like deadly do right kind of thing but I, what i think makes owen interesting is the fact that he maybe couldn't do it without the powers you know he's not your like perfect superhero like who's always going to be saving the day even even when he can't i think he might be too freaked out <laughs> like honestly like i feel like owen I see this like fear underwriting where it's like he wants like Abby and Tilda to like him so badly in those things there that like he's trying. So to 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 me it's yeah it's it's both for him. So like you know hope hope and hopefully those things can work hand in hand for him. Well, I mean, when you think about Superman, right? Um, to to go to like the the uber invulnerable guy, you yeah. know, he's Superman. He's always Superman. He can fight Doomsday who's stronger than he is, and he'll still fight him because he's Doomsday. Yeah, totally. Now Owen. If Owen went up against a doomsday, you know, the guy stronger than he is, more vulnerable than he is, would he run away or do you think he'd stand his ground now? I think he'd stand his ground. I think with the powers, uh, I've thought about this often of like, would Owen like sacrifice himself kind of thing? And I yeah. get, I think he would, you know, uh, it, you'd have to see what the situation he's in. But I feel like with the powers, it's like it's elevating him. And I also feel like his confidence kind of grows over time. Like even from the first time we see him in in four to when you see him in nine, I feel like he's more chill uh, and like getting a little more comfortable in his own skin. Like we talked about that when we were doing his his wardrobe that like gave him a leather jacket in the second one that it's just like, oh yeah, Owen's getting a little cooler now. Or at least he feels he's cooler. Um, So I think given, yeah, I think he would run into a burning building even if it was going to potentially take him down um, with his powers kind of thing. And, And maybe... Maybe I'd go back on what I said before. Maybe it gets to a point where like, I think him with enough confidence, you know, you run this thing forward to season three or something like that. <laughs> I think he'd do it without his powers. You, you know, think I, so? think, I think people learn that kind of, I, I don't think necessarily like heroic behavior is something that's like inherent to you. Some of it I think is like a learned thing in life where it's like you acquire confidence. Like nobody, most people aren't born with maximum confidence. You like put yourself out there. You see things working. You like, you start to trust yourself a little bit more. That's like growing up in life as you find yourself. And I think that's what he's doing. Have you ever seen the movie Three Kings with George Clooney? I don't know if I have. Okay, there's a line in, in the Three Kings. I'm going to I'm gonna butcher the line, but it's just basically okay. what it says, um, more or less. It says, because it's about soldiers um, who, at the after the the, um, the war in Iraq, the, the Gulf War, I mean, um, they decided to steal some gold. And right. so what the main guy, the SEAL, Navy SEAL Marine guy, is talking to one of the other regular soldier guys. He goes, you do the thing you're scared shitless of, and then you get your courage. And the guy who answered goes, well, shouldn't mm-hmm. it be the other way around? He's like, it should be, but it's not. You do the thing, and then you get courage from it. I, I totally agree with that. Um, 
man, like that, I think about like in my life, um, I, I got to tour with, uh, with Shania Twain a handful of years ago. Like, um, we got to do a bunch of arenas and stuff. And I, I remember the first night in, um, we were playing in Seattle and I was going up, uh, to sing with her. So we did party for two together every night. And I was just like livid beforehand. Like I was standing there side stage and like, it was some of the most nervous I think I've ever been in my life. Like I thought I was going to like heart jump out of my chest kind of thing. And, and then she said my name and introduced me. I'm like, well, I have to go on the stage now. And it felt like that where it was like, by the next time it was easier to do. But as I walked up those stairs, I had no confidence that I would be able to do it. You know, it was just like, well, it's happening. Like we're, <laughs> we're, we're doing it. And then, yeah, you, it's like, you create almost a precedent for yourself where you're like, the next time you have to do it, you can mentally reference like, oh, well, I already did it. Even if I'm quite concerned about whatever mm. this next thing is in life, I have evidence that I can do that. So now we can do it again kind of thing. So I totally agree with that. I think you learn to be confident. So the moment when you first, that first time that you signed, you said you kind of had to get your shit together and like do it the first time because you were scared. What made you get through? How did you get through that first try before you had the courage? Uh, I mean, some of that just comes down to like rehearsal and like a bit of autopilot where it's like, I had been playing in a band at that point for 15 years of my life. I had rehearsed that song hundreds of times in the weeks leading up to it. Like it, you, you trust the process somewhere along the lines. I, I'm, I'm big on that where it's like, there are many things in life where like, I've never in my life played a show or been on a film set where I'm not quite nervous ever. Like it, it's always there with me. Um, but I trust that I've prepped for it. I trust that like I've done literally years of training for, for acting and, and like played and mm. played music. For, you just at some point have to like the thing that probably made it work was just like, cool, the muscle memory and the autopilot is good <laughs> at that point. So like you can trust that. Yeah, I'm, I'm big on that. Like when we, when we were doing the Shania tour in, in the months leading up to it, me and my band, we had a six song set for we were the opening act and we ran, we rehearsed that more than anything else i've ever done in my life like we we had like like probably 100 hours of rehearsal or something and like like way more rehearsal than you need for like all of us knew those songs very well after two rehearsals but we ran them into the ground not because we wanted the show to be robotic but so it could be like then you can have fun yeah then once you're up there you're like oh cool i just know how to do this it's so like baked into me that now we can we can play whereas if you're like if you don't have the craft and you don't have the training for whatever it is you're doing, then you're in your head. Then you're trying to be like, Oh no, how do we figure that out? And then it's, man, it's hard to have fun in those situations. Now, now do you get more nervous acting or uh, performing? I think it's about the same. Um, and it's funny. I, I've just kind of come to accept it. Like it doesn't bug me as much as it used to. I, you know, I, I, when I started out acting, playing, you know, solo music shows, I expected those nerves to just go away at some point. They never really did, but it becomes the precedent thing where it's like, all right, well, I've played hundreds of shows and I've been on a bunch of TV shows and been in a bunch of movies. And it's like, I know I can do this. So you almost come to, it's almost something you kind of look forward to. It's an, it's this like excitement and anxiety and adrenaline. They're all kind of wrapped up in it um, together. But yeah, they, I feel very similarly before, um, right before they call action and right before you step on stage, similar vibe. Now, when, when you're different between singing, I mean, there's a lot of difference between singing and acting. I mean, there's a lot of difference. But one thing I was thinking about is, as you're talking, is that when you're performing, you only got that one take in front of the audience. When you're mm -hmm. acting, if you do screw up, you got the retake and the retake and the retake. How totally. does that affect you mentally, knowing in one way you have the ability to keep going and the other one, this is the only shot you got. You're in front of the audience. You got to do it. Yeah. Um. So a couple things. One, I almost... I always like to sort of almost try and apples to apples them as much as I can, where it's like the equivalent is more like, I feel like the recording studio in music is closer to like film and TV yeah. and then like doing a play uh, as an actor uh, 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 versus, versus like, um, like a live performance as a musician, you know what I mean? Where it's hmm. like, there are components of those that lock up. Um, yeah, because it's the same deal when you're like singing a take in a recording studio, you can do it as many times as you need to. Whereas if you're, you know, doing it live, you got to hit it. There, there's like nerves to both. I mean, um, it is different. There's something when you're doing anything live, 
you kind of have to throw it away and like micro analyze it a little bit more or, or a little bit less. I mean, there's certainly still like pressure of takes, like most of the time when you're doing TV, it's not like some of the bigger films I've been on where it's like, cool, you really get a lot of takes. Whereas like sometimes on TV stuff, you get two takes and you're moving on. So it can <laughs> feel, it can feel similar to be sure. Um, I don't know. I, I always feel like I do my best acting takes when the camera is not on me. It always frustrates <laughs> me that it's like, you know, camera's on you and you're like maybe a little more tense. And then it's like you flip around to the other person. And you're like, I'm the greatest actor ever over here. No one's, <laughs> no one's seeing this. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, with, with all of it, what I try to do is be as unfocused on the product as I can be and more just like in process at all times mm. and be like, cool, just like, just keep doing the thing, keep working the thing, keep going back to what you know as an actor as a musician just dive into the song you know what you're doing and like you just can't control like especially when you know well with anything you just have no control over final product like you're not the one editing it you're not the person in the crowd you don't know what kind of day they're having you don't know what will connect with them so it's you trust your instincts and do the best you can <laughs> so so one thing there being you have two different skill sets you know you have the singing performing and you have an acting how much do the skills intersect? Because as a singer, I imagine it helps being able to act because I feel like even though you're singing a love song, you're not always in love at the exact moment you're singing your mm -hmm. song and that thing. However, as an actor, a lot of that is, I can't imagine that the ability to have a, a range of voice and whatnot helps you with that. How yeah. interconnected are these skills for you? I think hugely. That There's a bunch of overlap just in performing in general. Uh, the voice thing is actually really helpful. Like I, I find... It allows me to adopt different voices. It gives me a lot of vocal longevity where I know like you can blow your voice as an actor as well. Like if you need to be really projecting or you're in a scene that's really animated and you're yelling in someone's face or something. Um, I find people sometimes without a lot of vocal training can really fry their voice doing that after a couple of takes where if you're not mm. supporting it with breath, um, because that's part of it, like longevity matters there where it's like if you can be spot on for one take that's great but that might not be enough you know you, <laughs> you got to get a bunch of coverage of it we got to you know you, you shoot days that are 12 hour days or, or, or longer sometimes um yeah so it's, it's helpful there um yeah and then it's also just yeah that whole sort of performance thing like it's definitely having having voices that you can pull into both and just being able to like find something to connect to um be it in in a song or in a script now, when, now in the inevitable season two of Imperfects, is Owen going to have like a um, a song like a, that he gets like a, a scene where he gets to sing? Like, is there going to be like a karaoke <laughs> for Owen? Like, just to you know, like TV show something like there's someone who can sing. They kind of yeah, find yeah. a way to like enter that into the TV show. <laughs> oh my god, I should I should start beating that drum because <laughs> I would love to hear Owen's original music. To me, <laughs> he would write the simplest, like most uh uh like altruistic <laughs> songs of just like heroism kind of thing um i would i would, or or maybe he would just be like writing like heartbroken songs kind of oh. thing you know, maybe, you know owen's probably got a crush somewhere along the lines um i would love that <laughs> oh owen the singer would would be very entertaining because i feel like like the, the the show in the imperfects we, we lost out a little bit on, on the in season one we didn't get the singing owen and we didn't get <laughs> owen backstory really i mean i don't i feel like owen is a character who should have an Owen TV show that focuses on who he, at least, or at least a one shot where you just get his storyline, you know? Yeah. I mean, obviously I'm biased because I'd, I'd like to do more Owen. Um, <laughs> any chance I get to be involved in like sci-fi fantasy, I'm like, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. So, I mean, fingers crossed because I would love, love, love to, to see what Owen's life in, in Olympia is, <laughs> is, is like. It just, it feels so, um, I love what they did. They, they even gave him his own little score there, you know, where it's yeah. like when he goes to talk, there's this like very over the top hero -y music starts to play. I'm like, I, I just feel like that's his life. I was expecting a song from you in the show for Owen. Oh, I would love that. So, I mean, you know, and, and they really pulled a lot of rad music for this. Like the, I, I'm just, I'm so impressed with the, with the creative team on this. Like they, mm. they, they really pulled out all the stops to make this like, it's just quirky, you know. It's just got like an interesting spin going for it. I I think what I mean I, I really enjoyed the show. Like so me and my wife have been binging it, but I think that pisses me off is that the team, especially Tilda, are so freaking mean to him. 
I mean, like, why? He was such a good guy. His his intentions are so pure. And Tilda's like, no, nah, you suck. And, like, no, I'm a oh, I, and she's like, no, you're never superhero. You suck. <laughs> I I I got into like <laughs> a conversation with Morgan about that when we were shooting. I'm like, where's the love? Like, does Tilda have no love? And she's like, not for you. She doesn't. <laughs> and I was just like, ah. But you know, so like, yeah, admittedly, it's like you, you you wear your heart on your sleeve and you do that. Like in those takes, I'm I'm like sad doing it because I like I know I have to lose, but you have to re- like you have to go for the objective. You can't go in knowing you're gonna lose. So you gotta go into every one of those scenes trying to make like all of them like you. The, Come on, guys, right. like super squad. So yeah, it's it's heartbreaking. <laughs> but I also I was jazzed to get to do in in later in the season to have what felt kind of more like the with power comes great responsibility speech <laughs> with one I was, I was referencing that at the time i'm like i'm totally ben parkering right now <laughs> all right i'm into that so that felt it felt even like a modicum of of like arc for owen where it was like i was getting through to him a bit it was driving me crazy like abby and whatnot the all every other uh imperfect powered character they're like embracing hannah who betrayed them like no she's good now everyone else they're like even the uh the scientist uh alex who screws them over multiple times they're like nah he's one of us he's a team but owen they're like screw that guy <laughs> yeah they're not a fan I, <laughs> so I, I mean we need hashtag justice for owen right, right. um <laughs> Yeah, I think there's, you know, I think there's a long arc for him to 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 come around in this because, yeah, it, and it's like it's very much so in the like vibe of those characters where it is like a more kind of jaded attitude type of thing. And Owen's just like so <laughs> apart from that um, that it's still it's still fun to play inside kind of thing because like I'm Owen's just going to keep throwing down his thing. He's just always going to be there trying to be a superhero, guys. So. Well, well, here's a question like um, that you, you can answer for Owen if you want, but you can already answer as yourself. Um, <laughs> let's say, right, right. Let's say there's a, let's say alternate imperfect world where the t- the the main team of the three, Choopy, Tilda, and, and Abby, are not dicks. Would <laughs> Owen have made it onto the team, and would or would he still always you think had that blow up moment where he kind of goes copper rage? <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's a good question. Um, you know, I think I'll I'll sort of speak as me as as the meta on this because like um, <laughs> I don't know the backstory. I don't know what Owen's life was like with these guys in the wellness program because that that to me is very interesting to like see if you ever get to see any more of like or any insight into that and what yeah. that was like is is very cool. Yeah, I mean, I think if they were like more more into a little more on his page there we'd probably end up you know being a squad together and and maybe that's something in the future who knows uh where it's just like it, it it's interesting to me to see where that stuff goes because like i think they over the course of you know see different value to their own powers and like the uh, i think that's one of the interesting things about the show is starting them where they start gives you a lot of places to go mm. you know and whether they all go there at the same time or at different times, like you can see, you know, fracturing can happen there where it's like, what does everyone want to do with this thing that's happened to them? Well, I, I think, I don't know. I mean, let's say I love the characters of the show, but that in that, in that episode, when he starts like raging on them a little bit, I'm thinking to myself, they kind of deserved it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they're so <laughs> like, they're such dicks. And hey, Owen was such a good guy. <laughs> You're right there with me. Like it was, it was very easy to like get there for it where I was just like, well, you've been dicks to me for the whole episode. Like, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> like, blown through. I, like, I remember the first take where I, like, brought out the voice for, like, Owen starting to kind of lose it. Yeah. Uh, and I remember everybody just, like, looked at me all of a sudden because up until that moment, I'd been very, like, come on, guys, like, super squad. And then it goes, like, oh, I'm not a villain. Right. <laughs> um, like, all right, you made me do this. <laughs> Could partially be the copper in my blood and brain, but, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate that, man. I <laughs> gotta have my, have my fans out there. <laughs> like, like, do you think like what did how bad did that screw up Owen having known that he just went copper crazy? I mean, the main thing I want to comment on Owen has no phone when he leaves. I'm like imagining him at the end of the driveway. I like I wanted it to be this like after the credits sequence <laughs> of him just being like, I need to call an Uber to get home. I don't have a phone, <laughs> and he has to walk back to Olympia. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Uh, oh, man, I've lost my train of thought. Question was, question was, um, oh, does it screw him up? Yeah. yeah, I think, I think it probably does to an extent where it's like that shows him what can happen and shows him the like danger of his own powers. Um, I don't think it would shake him out of his tree of doing that kind of thing, but like he's going to want to stay on those copper, <laughs> copper level pills kind of thing <laughs> to, to make sure he rides that. Um, but yeah, I can't see how that wouldn't like, it's him seeming like a villain and being seen as a villain and being able to objectively be like, Ken was a villain for just a little bit there. Right. I mean, it's sort of like he has his own red kryptonite. That's himself. You yeah. Know, like cause Superman fought himself a few times and was Superman three. He fought the evil Superman version of himself. Yeah, with yeah, red kryptonite. Yeah. Owen is his own red kryptonite, which kind of has to suck. Yeah. Oh, totally. And I mean, that seems to be the thing with this show. Like all these powers have a pretty like acute barb to them. You mm. know what I mean? Like, there's no one on there who's got like a perfect like la di da kind of thing. Like, you know, mine, I miss my pills for two days. I completely lose my mind and start murdering things and eventually become solid metal. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, um, it, it's I just find it in it's interesting that they've they've done that where it's like the powers in this are not so written like there isn't someone who's just got like obvious awesome powers. Usually these shows have at least a few people where it's like, oh, yeah. No real drawbacks over there. Like right, Owens right. is probably the closest to drawback free, but like there's a drawback. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss your pills, man. Yeah, drawback. He could kill everybody, which yeah, could but be he kill everyone he loves. Uh, <laughs> so watch out. So, uh, so I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit. Um, because of you know we had season one. What do we know of what where Owen was going to go in season two? Um. I don't think I'm at the liberty to disclose anything of it uh, because for the moment we are just fingers crossed that we get a season two because that would be wonderful to get to play around in. But yeah, I, I don't know anything, nothing official of 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 anything at all for uh, for where this whole uh, operation goes. Do we hear rumors that seem positive for a season two? <laughs> um, I, I feel like I'm like the last person to know on these things. You know, you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, I like to imagine that I'm on like a conference call with Netflix every morning and they're like, all right, is your update is your Owen Schultz update. But like, you might know when I know, uh, maybe, maybe I'll know a little sooner, but like, there's been stuff. I remember, <laughs> I remember years ago, I was in the Warcraft movie. Um, and then my cousin went and saw it before I did. And he's like, you got cut out of the Warcraft. Movie. Oh, no. <laughs> I, was like, uh, I was only in it for one scene. Um, and then, yeah, sure enough, like my name's in the credits, but I don't actually show up in it. So that's, that's one of my larger instances. Like, that, that happens fairly often where like scenes get cut. Like I've had scenes cut out of when I was in Smallville. I remember some of my scenes were cut, um, you know, a, a lot of that's just time. Like when it really comes down to it of like, mm. you often shoot more than you actually have space for in the edit and you got to manage pace. And like, I don't know, I do a fair bit of um, directing as well. So like, I get that. Like I, I direct a number of music videos where I've shot sequences that I love but to just sync the pace of it. Like we just don't have time. And so yeah. I'm always just like, I don't know, cut them into something later, but like, <laughs> what do you do with it? Um, so yeah, it's a, it, it, I've lost the question again. I, I wandered, I um, rambled, I did it. I, I, I was going to have you guarantee me that there's a second season of Imperfect, <laughs> I think. I was, right. there something that was right. we were headed. That's a, that's an Owen ironclad guarantee or a copper <laughs> guarantee. Man, I certainly hope so. Cause holy smokes. To get to do more days of that and working with those people would so, be a blast. So how likely is the Owen Schultz comic book then? Do you assume <laughs> that one of these companies would make a perfect spinoff and make an <laughs> Owen Schultz comic book series that we can then purchase as we wait for Imperfect Season 2, which is probably definitely happening. What I want is Chupy and Peanuts. This is the thing that I, <laughs> I, 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 I put out, I made like a, a, a bad graphic of it while, while we were filming the last episode that I was in. <laughs> and, and uh, me and Kiki shared it the other day. Um, or, um, and, and basically, I mean, that would be the dream. So, you know, we, we just kept joking that it would be a, a fun spin off. <laughs> just like, because it just feels like our one like escapade there is very Scooby Doo. <laughs> just like, all right, we're going to go find this. Oh, we found gun runners instead. Like <laughs> might it might be a meth lab. Um, so yeah, any anything like that. I like I like the hijinks of that. It's it's fun. <laughs> but yeah, man, if if that was in a comic book, um it it, it would be right. I also the, the 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 comic book that they did for this show that like Juan draws on the on on the show is so rad to actually like have in your hands. Oh, yeah. really? There's I found the um I unfortunately don't recall the uh 
their, their name, but I found the person on Twitter and, and started following them. The actual graphic artist who did it, like the that I think was it was it Skull Candy maybe I'm trying to remember the name of it. I'm I'm now blanking. Which I apologize. Um, but it just it looked beautiful. Like I and I got to hit, hold it in my hands. So all those scenes, I was very distracted and just like really like oh this is <laughs> freaking rad. Oh, that's so cool. So yeah, so I, I do think the future does should have a comic book and an action figure. Owen has how does Owen not have an action figure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be it would have to be made of metal. <laughs> his would have to be metal. Everybody else's could be plastic and stuff, but his would have to be like dense metal. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be absolutely put it on awesome. your coffee table and it scratches things. <laughs> Yeah, uh, going for. Well, sir, thank you so much for coming on the show. I look forward to Imperfect Season Two, which we're we're now announcing ourselves because we <laughs> want it to happen. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think if we just keep willing it strongly enough here. Yeah, that's uh, if, if, that's, that's if you keep good. repeating, people the, the, the producer may even be like, "Oh shit, we are doing a season two. Oh shit, okay, yeah, well, yeah. You know, let's just yeah, just it. <laughs> really just start the rumor, just right. just get that going uh, uh, <laughs> that it's definitely happening, and, and, and eventually it feeds back, and so everybody just goes, "Well, I guess we're doing it." So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, sir. You're you've been fantastic. Uh, it's been my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me.